Hello, my name is Alex, and today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up uh, interacting with objects that you grab uh, in VR um, using Unreal Engine. Um, before I go and jump into the video, um, if you find the video you know helpful, um, it would really mean a lot if you like, subscribe, you know, comment, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, really means a lot. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go ahead and. Uh, jump into the video. So first things we're going to want to do is actually um, go ahead and create, we're actually going to want to create a new actor for this, but it's going to be based off of an actor we've already created. Um, first I'll go and do this in Blueprint. So um, we're actually going to be basing it off of the uh, grippable actor, which I had actually touched on very briefly in a previous video, um, uh, grabbing and things like that. So uh, if if you skip that video, um, I'll actually go and leave it a uh, link. Um, should actually be right above me, I believe. Um, <laughs> um, but we'll basically be using that same actor. And um, I've already gone ahead and made sure, make sure I had the right one. Uh, it's the BP grippable actor, um, which as I said, I, I already made. So what we're actually gonna do is create a new class. Uh, and this will be BP grip, oh actor there we go so it will basically be derived from that same class and this one we're actually going to call interactable uh, actor uh, the reason I'm actually doing a separate one from the grippable is quite often you'll have two different types of um, actors in VR games you'll have ones that uh, or I guess I should say actors that you want to interact with. You'll have ones that you just simply want to grab, but there's nothing you're going to be doing with them. And then you'll have an alternative, which is one that you want to be able to grab and interact with in some way or another. Uh, and by making it a separate interactable actor, we can just, um, we can then just drive off of this one several times over. Um, and the same with the grippable actor. Um, so yeah, uh, so going into this, uh, we'll go ahead um, we'll go ahead, um, in order to actually do this, um, we'll actually go ahead and create a function, uh, to actually set this up and we'll go and call the function, uh, interact. Um, and so this, this is automatically a public, uh, function. We'll be able to, we'll be able to grab it no matter, uh, from anywhere, um, which is exactly what we want. Um, now the interaction is going to change based off of what you want for your interactable actor to actually do. Um, for this, I'm going to keep it simple, um, but still somewhat noticeable. So we're actually going to go ahead, go ahead and grab the static mesh. And it's actually possible to modify the material that is on it. Um, set material of the static mesh. Uh, that is not what I meant to do. Um, so we'll go ahead and just change the material. So this will actually change what the cube looks like. Um, I, w I wouldn't recommend changing the, um, the, the, the uh, mesh itself just because it might do funny things um, depending on what you're changing it to. Um, so that would be the only reason I'd suggest not doing that. And we'll go ahead and change it to something noticeable. We'll change it to, let's see what we got here. Uh, I saw one up here. Uh, there's this really nice one. Here we go. Arc endpoint. Uh, I, I actually kind of like this this uh, this material. It's a very nice material, um, in my opinion. Um, so there we go. So we got that. Um, next thing we're going to want to do is, um, in order to actually do this, um, I actually uh, unhooked the um, the um, widget interaction, which I used in my last video, I believe. Um, so what we'll actually end up doing is I'm going to run this through the, uh, the main player pawn. Um, and the reason for this is actually uh, due to networking. Uh, and I've gone over this in past videos briefly as well. But, um, but to, just to briefly go over it. Uh, when you're dealing with networking in uh, Unreal Engine, if you're doing any kind of multiplayer, if you're doing any kind of interaction, like you're spawning things in or anything like that, 
you typically want to run as much of that as possible through the pawn, through the uh, owning pawn or player character as possible. Uh, the reason being is based off the structure of networking in Unreal Engine, uh, especially with like dedicated servers and stuff. Um, the the main player character tends to have a lot of control over what can and cannot happen on or what can and cannot be pushed to the server and then replicated back down to all the clients that are connected to it. So um, so it's it's if you're looking to create a multiplayer game, you definitely want to run it through the player if possible. Um, if you're not, then quite frankly, it doesn't matter. You could use a different method. Um, but and, and this isn't, um, at least not at the moment, going to be a uh, networked project right now. But I, I like to keep that in mind for later on in case, you know, you ever want to take a project and you want to make a multiplayer um, or anything like that, then it makes it a little bit easier later down the line. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically why I do that. And I actually created, um, I actually changed the input for now um, since I uh, didn't want to use that anymore. So let's actually go ahead and change this interact left and interact right. I uh, will go and grab both those. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is when we're pressed, um, we we'll wanna go ahead and grab bo uh, both of our hands, which are left controller and right controller. So if we go and grab left controller and we grab right controller, um, we can actually jump into here. And again, this was part of my uh, gripping video that I had done. Um, this is all the code for grabbing, uh, but the thing I want to focus on was this attached actor. So this will actually tell you if something is attached to the um, to the hand, um, which is what we all is what we want to look for. So what we want to do is grab this attached actor, and we're going to want to get the class and or get its parent class um, is what we're going to want to do. Um, is child of um, and the reason we're doing this is that if you create a new interactable that's derived off of this interactable actor like you take this one and then you turn this uh, you create a new actor off this one that's like a gun maybe you create another one that's um, uh, maybe like a wand or something or you know something like that um, then you want to make sure that at the at its root it is an interactable actor um, and interact is actually uh, still accessible to anything that's derived off that anyways. Um, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead um, cast to um, not cast to, uh, we want a branch and we want to make sure it is a child of interactable actor. Um, and I'm actually going to grab all this real quick and just go and copy this down for the right controller as well. Um, let's actually give ourselves a little bit more room. Um, I'm going to run this down, pressed. And then, uh, assuming that this is true, um, we whatever we're trying to interact with is an interactable actor, um, then we want to come through, we want to first cast it to uh, interactable actor so that way we can actually access that function. And there. Trying to keep make it look a little bit neat, um, and then we want to run um, interact. I blinked out there for a sec. I was trying to remember what function I was trying to call, um, and we're going to end up doing the same thing for the left hand as well. Uh, true. And there we go. Um, so that handles all that. So this will essentially just make it so that way we can uh, click on uh, click on a, an actor that we've grabbed, and uh, it should run the interact function no problem. So we'll go and give this a quick test run right here. Um, we'll go and drop into the world, pull it up a little so I can reach it a little easier without having to do too much work. 
Um, and actually, before I forgot, or before I forget, I guess, um, I did import the correct motion controller pawn, but I forgot to set to auto possess and auto receive input. There we go. Um, so let's go ahead, give us a quick test run. All right, so um, it all worked fine. I had uh, uh, some brief troubles getting my headset uh, connected right. I was doing some funny stuff. Um, oh, that's not what I meant to do. So let me go ahead, start this real quick. Uh, I'm going to press play. Um, so if I actually go and reach over, so I have it grabbed, and I go and press trigger. There you go. Uh, it all works just fine. Uh, you can see it changed the material, so now it's a uh, bright blue, um, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, all works well. Um, so yeah, so that's how you set that up in Blueprint. All right, so that was a uh, interactable actor set up for, uh, for VR in Blueprint. Um, if you wanna see how to do it in C++, I'll be doing that in a separate video in the future. So um, if you want to see that, uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. Um, and until next time, see ya.